Mr. Uh, Chancellor, Mr. President, distinguished guests, faculty, students, parents, ladies and gentlemen. Start, Mr. President, uh, thank you for your hospitality and hosting a luncheon in my honor and the courtesies that you have extended to me and my family. And Mr. Chancellor, it's a pleasure to be in the company of one who has contributed so much to public life. Special pleasure to be hooded to gave today by Dr. Margaret McCain, who was the Lieutenant Governor of New Brunswick during my time as Premier and has become a lifelong friend and a role model. And thank you, David Peterson. You've been a huge inspiration for me, a constant mentor and a lifelong friend. This university, this province, and this country have been well blessed with your past, present, and continu continuing commitment to public service. And Julie and I and our family feel well blessed to have you as such an important part of our life. Having listened to introductions at lunch today and the introduction tonight, I feel a little bit like the widow who listened to the preacher's eulogy and then whispered to one of her children, run up there quickly and make sure that's your daddy in the box. <laughs> My most important message today is to the graduates. Congratulations. Celebrate. Jump and sing and party and go wild, be proud. You've just graduated from the University of Toronto. <clears throat> I've been fortunate, as many others here have, in uh, receiving uh, more than my fair share of awards and distinctions. And almost every time, I usually start off by saying that I'm very humbled. Candidly, I'm usually not very humbled at all. <laughs> I'm not that humble a person, <laughs> to know, if you want to know the truth. But receiving an honorary degree from the University of Toronto, I'm not just humbled, I'm gobsmacked. I'm a simple son of the sod, born to a family, farm family of 10 in rural New Brunswick, the only one in my family to go to university, and I lived on hand-me-downs my entire life until I started at work, which is why my wife says that I always look like an unmade bed. <laughs> Julie, my wife, keeps me humble. When I asked her what I should say today, she told me, don't try to be too profound or witty or provocative, just be yourself. So I stand before you today to receive an honor that's been bestowed on premiers and prime ministers and presidents and poets and Nobel Prize winners. Humble doesn't do justice to how I feel. And because I feel so good about being here today, I want to deliver a message to you about a world of joy, of hope, and of opportunity for you and your fellow graduates. There's no sublime message in what I'm about to say to you today. I simply want to tell you about a world that is better and better with each passing day. If you followed the daily news, you wouldn't believe that. It's enough to make you retreat to a cabin in the deep forest, stock it with canned goods, and wait out the apocalypse. <laughs> We're saturated with stor stories of war, heinous crimes, terrible atrocities, scandals and deficits, melting ice caps, drought, and on and on and on. But the world is actually a better place than the headlines indicate. Indeed, it's a far better place. It's a better place than it was a week ago, a far better place than it was a year ago, and a far, far better place than it was 10 years ago. We actually have fewer wars than ever before. We have fewer people killed in wars than ever before. We have fewer nuclear weapons than ever before. Our crime rate is plummeting, the lowest it's been in 50 years. Child mortality has fallen by half in just 25 years. Extreme poverty has been cut in half in 25 years. Our life expectancy is extending dramatically. Global life expectancy has increased by six years in the past two decades alone. Canadians have added 25 years to their lifespan in the last century. And we're more prosperous. And we're more educated. And we have access to more knowledge. More than 3,000 new books are published every day. The amount of new technical information in the world doubles every two years. There are more than three billion Google searches every month. And we're more connected than we ever were before. The number of text messages sent and received every day exceeds 
the population of the planet. YouTube serves up 2 billion videos a day. Internet is growing by 40% a year. People post 2.5 billion photos on Facebook every month. Twitter's tweet 750 times a second. And this steady drumbeat of progress is not going to diminish. You know, the Stone Age didn't end because we ran out of stones. It ended because something better came along. And something better is always coming along. And in a planet filled with promise and opportunity, there's no better place to be than where you're sitting right now in this country of ours called Canada. When I was in Washington, as the chancellor was, other ambassadors would often come up to me and tell me that I was the luckiest ambassador in the city of Washington. When I asked why, they would say, because you represent Canada. Every country in the world is envious of Canada. We live in a country of magnificent achievement and staggering potential. We live in a country that's never known war in its soil, the scourge of famine, the terrible pain of earthquakes and tsunamis and other natural disasters. We live in a country replete with arable land. We live in a country that contains over 20% of the world's fresh water. We live in a country where we've been able to, to balance a market economy, fiscal discipline with progressive social programs. We live in a country where we truly believe that we are our brother's keeper. And not every country in the world believes the same thing. We live in a country that believes that government is not inherently evil and that it can effect improvement in our lives. We live in a country that's prepared to balance collective rights with individual rights. We live in a country where reasonable control on firearms is supported, where incarceration balances punishment with rehabilitation, and where climate change is not denied. We live in a country that has been able to achieve a degree of accommodation not always perfect, but always attempted between our two founding linguistic communities and our First Nations. We live in a country of immigrants, a country that welcomes people from far off lands to our bosom with welcoming arms. We live in a country that accommodates individual cultures and languages and customs and creeds. And believe me, not every country in the world does that. Like other Canadians, I was transfixed with the drama that unfolded on Parliament Hill that resulted in the death of a Canadian soldier. Emotions were at a fever pitch, and it was not surprising that strong feelings were being expressed. However, in my Canada and your Canada, our innate sense of decency prevailed. When a mosque in Cold Lake, Alberta was defaced with the words, go home, it was quickly covered over with a new marking which read, you are home. So as we celebrate your graduation today, I would implore you never to take this country for granted or in fact this planet on which we live. Do not be like those feckless souls who take away from their parents and rob from their grandchildren. Live your life unselfishly. Live your life with purpose. Live your life with joy. Thank you.